Hello everyone, welcome. I am Nirmal Malapak. I am a visualization developer here at Wolfram Research. And today uh, my talk is about uh, geo-visualization in the Wolfram language. Before I begin, a few housekeeping points. If you have any questions, please type them into the chat session and um, I'll take a look at them um, after the presentation. If you're listening to this talk live, there is a, a virtual office hours with uh, visualization developers after this talk. So if you're interested, I would encourage you to go to that session. So with that out of the way, let me begin my presentation um, about geovisualization. Geovisualization in the Wolfram language um, unifies geographics functionality with um, data visualization features. And so um, here's a list of the things that um, I will go through in this talk. Not necessarily in this order, um, but uh, they're just here to give you a sense of some of the topics that I'd like to cover. So we'll start off by looking at some basic geographics example um, examples so that uh, you know we can set the stage for talking about geovisualization functions. Um, then we'll take a look at all the geo visualization functions that we have, and we'll take a look at them from the point of view of the data that they um, seek to visualize. Um, throughout this talk, we will take a look at uh, the different options that we have um, that control not just the uh, the geographics layer of the visualization, but also the data visualization layer. And then. Uh, um, finally, I'll point out some of the new features and updates for geo um, visualization functions that we've been working on for the upcoming release of the Wolfram language. Okay, so to start off, um, we have a very rich and deep um, geo computation and geographics functionality in the Wolfram language. So we seek to leverage those to construct the different geovisualization functions. So if we wanted to um, visualize, um, let's say, a city um, using geographics, um, how would we do it? So one way would be to get the information about the city into the Wolfram language um, via the Wolfram knowledge base. And so we can do that by hitting control equals in a notebook environment and typing in Berlin and accepting the recommendation that we get from the knowledge base. And that fetches um, the entity information about Berlin. Now we can feed that into geoposition, which computes the latitude and longitude um, for Berlin. And then what we are doing here is to um, ask geographics to plot that location. And so geographics will um, draw a map of the location, um, the area of Berlin. And then we've asked uh, geographics to draw a disk around that location of a certain radius and a certain opacity. And so you see this uh, sort of um, light gray disk that is plotted around Berlin. Now we can also do the same thing with um, a polygon. So we can use the entity framework get to get the polygon information for Germany. And when we plot that using geographics, you see a map um, with Germany highlighted. So these are some of the basic building blocks um, for doing geographics. And this is what we use for building different geo visualization functions. So as long as we want to do something simple like this, um, it's not a problem to use geographics. But once we want to uh, plot more information and layer more data on top of these um, graphics, then it can get uh, um, complicated quite quickly. And so to deal with that, we have um, a suite of uh, geovisualization functions. And so uh, these functions are built on top of the geographics functionality. And we also leverage the different data plots that we have. 
and so we layer the geographics functionality in the and the data visualization functionality and build these um, geo visualization functions and so the names of these functions should give you some idea of what um, visualization functions will be um, using to make these plots and so we have geo list plot which is based off of list plot geo density plot on list density pl plot and so forth so we'll take a look at some of the examples uh, for these plots, but before we do that, let's classify these plots into um, into different categories based on the kinds of data that they handle. Um, this is important because um, in order to unify geographics and data visualization functions, um, two of the tools that we have are um, the data specification for these plots and the different options that control the different layers of the plot. So we'll be taking a look at both of them, but let's start with um, classifying the different um, data specifications. So if you wanted to do a geoplot, um, the data can be categorized into four broad classes. Um, the first one is locations. This is uh, virtually identical to the geographics example that I showed you. So we can specify the locations either as a geoposition or an entity or a graphics primitive like polygon or a geo primitive like geodisk. And we can use all of them pretty much directly in geographics, but we have um, some functions that use that in geo visualization as well. So we'll take a look at that. Now, if we wanted to add more information to this basic location information. Um, the way to do that is to, one way to do that is to um, associate each of those positions with a scalar value. And so that brings us to a second class of uh, data um, uh, that will be handled by GeoViz functions, and that is scalar values at locations. And so here, the locations again are specified as geoposition and entity and polygon, but each of those positions are then associated with a, a scalar value or a color for certain plots or a quantity. And um, the last line in that um, specifies you know, how we can do um, the association of a list of positions with a list of values for convenience. Um, we can, of course, also associate the positions um, with not just a scalar value, but a, a vector value. And so that brings us to the third class of data that we have. And so we can have geo vectors, which in themselves have a position and a vector associated with those positions. So we have geo vector, geo vector ENU. Um, or we can have a list of vectors or an association of location with vector and there are a class of plots that deal with these. And then uh, finally we have um, location intensity of points, um, which is a, a different way of uh, visualizing locations. And so um, these are kind of identical to um, what we have for the locations, um, except for the last line there, which uh, I'll come to in a minute. But um, these will pass through some visualization functions which uh, will give us information about the density of the locations and so forth. The last one that we have is an association where we associate each of these locations with, um, with a weight, and so we can visualize the location intensities based on the weights. Okay, so th those are the the four broad categorizations of uh, data for the different plots. So now let's look at the different plots um, and how each of these plots um, handle these data types. So the first one is locations. So this is uh, very similar to um, geographics. And so here we have um, the same kind of locations like geoposition and entity that are being passed into GeoList plot. And um, GeoList plot is going to take uh, the geoposition in and plot it as a point. And so is um, um, and so is the entity being plotted as a, a point. 
Um, we can also feed them GeoDisk or a disk, and um, they will plot those primitives um, overlaid on top of the geographics. So here, uh, this is pretty much identical to what geographics does, but here you can already see a small difference in that we are able to use geolabels as an option. And geolabels um, is able to figure out in the second case where we have um, entity as one of the um, ways to specify the location, it has enough that that entity has enough information for GeoList plot to figure out that it's able to do something intelligent with geolabels and uh, it's able to name, um, uh, label the point, the location of that city with the name of the city. This, of course, can be done in geographics too using geostyling, etc. But uh, from the point of view of um, data visualization, it's uh, more convenient and more natural to be able to use um, options that we are used to with data plotting functions. Gilis plot, um, of course, also is able to plot a list of values and a list of locations. And so here um, we have um, the capital cities of Europe um, as a list, and that is being plotted by GeoList plot as points um, corresponding to the locations of those capital cities. GeoList plot can also plot polygons. So if we ask GeoList plot to plot four different countries, for example, it's able to um, get the polygon information for those countries and plot the polygons corresponding to those countries. And here, um, since the list plot is based off of list plot, you um, can use the options like joint and plot style, which um, you're used to in list plot. So here, when I use joint, it joins um, the four countries that are being plotted. And with plot style, I'm able to change the the thickness and the dashing of the line to get a, a particular visual effect. So the next class of uh, data is uh, scalar values at locations. And so here um, we are adding a scalar value and associating with it with the location. So here we have um, the capital cities of Europe on the left side of the rule. And the right side of the rule has um, the populations of those cities as a list. And and so once we have this extra information, there are a range of things that we can do with the scalar values and visualize them in different ways. And um, each of those things that we can do um, becomes a different plot um, in the geo visualization land uh, that is able to handle scalar values at locations. The first one is geo region value plot where the locations of these points are plotted as, um, as points. Locations of the cities are plotted as points, and um, they're colored by their population, or the scalar value that is associated with those locations. And so here you can see um, the different capital cities have different colors, and the legend on the right shows you the, the, the colors corresponding to different population bands. And here I have also turned on um, geolabels, which have a tooltip. And um, so you can see that when I hover over some of these cities, y we are able to see the name of the city and the population associated with it. Something else we can do with the scalar associ uh, values associated with uh, our locations is um, not just to plot them as points and color them, uh, by their value, but also to increase uh, the size so that the size represents the different um, scalar values. So we have a plot that does this, which is bubble chart. And so um, the corresponding plot that we have uh, for geo visualization is geo bubble chart. And uh, so for the same data, we can see now that um, um, the bubbles corresponding to the capital city locations um, reflect the population size of that city. So uh, we also get to inherit all the features of bubble chart here. So if I hover over uh, some of these um, bubbles, you can see that you have a mouse over effect and you get a tooltip uh, that tells you the scalar value that is associated with that position. 
Um, something else we can do um, is to interpolate the scalar values. So um, we have different scalar values associated with uh, the capital cities, and we can interpolate the populations, and we can overlay the interpolated um, um, graphic on top of uh, the geographics so that it corresponds to those locations. And um, so we use list density plot to get the interpolated uh, density, and then um, we plot it at the locations. So the plot is called geodensity plot. And here I would like to draw your attention to a region function, um, which is able to specify um, Europe as the area that um, is uh, uh, that you want to clip uh, the density to, and so you get a nice clipping of the uh, the density around um, around Europe. So here is a an example of how um, different options for the geographics and uh, visualization functions work together. So here we have on the right hand side of the rule we have the elevation data for the different capital cities of Europe and so a natural way that we want to be able to plot them is to um, uh, use the contours um, and so we have geocontour plot which plots the contour values um, based on the elevation data for the capital cities. But you can see that we can control um, the different features of the contours, like contour shading and contours with those options. Uh, but we can also use the options from geographics and center the plot on France uh, using geocenter and set a, a relief um, for geo background. And so if you have um, enough of these um, um, data points, then we would expect them to correspond to the relief that we see in the background. So another way to visualize um, location data is to um, plot the location intensity of these points. And the natural way to get these intensities is uh, using histogram or smooth histogram. And the corresponding um, functions for geovisualizations are called geohistogram and geosmooth histogram. So here we're feeding um, the locations of the capital cities to geohistogram. And you can see that it's using um, a default uh, bin specification, and it's able to um, show us the different um, locations as bins. And as we would expect, most of these cities are um, separated by some distance, and so you can see that each of these bins is one, except for a few here. Um, uh, this one, I'm guessing, is uh, Rome and uh, Vatican City, uh, something in Austria, Vienna, and something else, uh, where the capital cities are uh, kind of closely um, positioned. Uh, we, of course, inherit all the features of histogram, so we are able to change the bin spec. And uh, here um, we get uh, bigger bins and how the different uh, cities fall into those bins. Um, this is an example where we can see that uh, the bin specification for geohistogram is adapted for um, this particular application. So we have country as the bin specification. And so we'll be using the countries for the bins. And as we would expect, um, each of the countries has uh, just one capital city, except for France, for some reason, which might be an error in the data, how it's classified, or it might just be an administrative uh, quirk of uh, yeah, some of the um, regions involved here. I'm not uh, extremely familiar with this, but this plot gives us a an excuse to delve more deeply into the data and do more explorations there. And finally, uh, here is uh, the specification that uh, associate weights with the locations so that we can get the intensity of the locations. And so here we have um, histogram where the locations of the capital cities are weighted by their city populations. And so we get a um, histogram, a geohistogram, where the bins are located um, at 
the uh, position at the locations and we have the bins um, that tell us how many how much population falls into each of these bins um, here we have uh, GeoSmooth histogram which uh, takes the data you know, I just uh, have the data in a different format here but uh, slightly different data for um, capital cities of the Eurozone countries and um, their corresponding populations and so that's what the data looks like and if we feed it into GeoSmooth histogram and we get the kernel uh, um, kernel density of the locations weighted by their populations and then we can overlay that on top of uh, the geographics so uh, the last class of uh, data that we looked at was uh, vector values at locations and so um, let's begin by constructing a geo vector and um, we just pick 100 random um, locations uh, in the world and we associate each of, each of those locations with a vector value we can of course plot this directly using geographics and a geo marker and each of those vectors are plotted as an arrow and um, using geographics and we can uh, set the geo projection um, etc but if we wanted to um, discern some pattern um, in the in the vectors, what we use is a geo vector plot, which then takes the array of those vectors and plots the um, um, the vector field. And so here we have um, the direction of the arrows showing the direction of the vector field, and the color of the arrows represents the magnitude of the vector field at that position. And this is uh, something that we changed recently for vector plot, where we uh, moved away from um, using the size of the arrows to represent the magnitude of the vector field to using color. And so that's something that we um, can directly inherit into a geo vector plot and, um, and use it there. Another example where uh, we're using the updated uh, vector markers. So here we have. Uh, um, markers that are shaped like um, water drops and um, and again this is something that we updated for uh, vector plot and we're able to use it in geo vector plot um, we can also visualize streamlines um, using geo stream plot and this is again based on uh, stream plots and um, we we're able to use stream style to set the thickness of the streamlines and um, geo background to change the, the look of the underlying geographics. So this gives you some idea of the flexibility of, uh, of uh, geo visualizations and the approach that we take to unify the options for geographics and uh, geo visualizations. And uh, finally, I just want to end with uh, um, uh, the new uh, features and updates that we have added to geo visualizations. And uh, y you have already looked at some of these um, um, in the examples above. I just wanted to point them out to you. So this one, um, geo region value plot um, here is plotting um, the countries of Europe and coloring them by their population. Um, but what happens is sometimes uh, some of uh, the countries um, in plots like this, um, they are at a different scale than, than the other countries here. So it becomes sometimes difficult to um, discern the, the, the polygons that uh, represent the smaller countries from the ones uh, that are much bigger. And so um, one of the features that we've added is for geo region value plot to auto identify the scale difference and to um, highlight um, the smaller um, features in in a visualization using um, points, for example. So here it's uh, able to auto identify the countries that might um, have much smaller polygons than the others, and uh, it uh, positions a a point at those locations. Another feature that we're adding is um, the ability to segment colors. And so, 
for geo region value plot, um, here in this case, when we are plotting the locations of the capital cities and coloring them by their population, um, in addition to being able to specify the color scheme to be used, um, it makes sense to be able to specify the method to be used to um, to classify the values, to split the values into different classes so that we get um, nice visual separation in terms of the colors that are being used. And so uh, the mechanism that we use uh, for that is a color function, um, which is a list here. And the first part of the color function takes the, the color scheme to be used. And the, the second um, part of the list specifies the method that uh, is to be used to classify the scalar values. And so we are using uh, k-means as a method here, and um, and that uh, is a quantile-based uh, method um, that can be used to create more separation in terms of colors. And uh, finally, we have um, um, updated uh, a couple of parsers for um, for GeoList plot and GeoRegion value plot, and so um, we are able to more consistently handle the data um, for these plots. Um, this um, enables us to be able to support um, a wider range of uh, primitives than before, and um, virtually almost all the primitives that are handled by um, geographics directly. And so you'll be able to, for example, plot uh, geodisks and um, other primitives directly into geolist plot and um, uh, create custom um, geoplots. Um, this also puts us in a better position to uh, be able to support um, new and updated features coming down the pike, not just from geographics in terms of updated um, geo primitives, um, but also new areas. Um, in the language like spatial statistics, which is a um, a big area that we are going to um, have features in, and we want to be able to visualize some of those um, in geoplots. And uh, I guess that brings us uh, to the end of my talk, and um, I will stop here. And thank you very much for attending. And I'll see if there are any questions in the chat. I will take them now. Thank you. Okay, so let me take a quick look at the questions here. I think uh, most of them have already been answered by Brett and Emmanuel. So let's see. Um, is it possible to include legends of bubble sizes? It's been answered by Brett. Um, Phil Ramston, Bratislava. Yes, that's that's correct. Vienna and Bratislava are uh, a position almost. Um, they're in the same bin there, so. Um, okay, so. Which geographics functionalities are new in 12.2? Um, so, so, so for 12.2, like I said in the, uh, in the presentation, uh, there's been a big update to geo List plot and geo region value plot, so we can um, we can have more um, support for um, different uh, you know data types that can be handled more consistently. Um, um, but then we also have um, uh, updates to how the color is segmented, uh, which is a big big piece of work that uh, Emmanuel did. Um, So I guess no, no new um, plots per se in 12.2, but in 12.1 we added uh, uh, some of the um, uh, some of the new plots. Um, and like Brett said, we've been consistently adding new um, visualizations, geo visualizations uh, uh, for every uh, version since nine. Okay, any more questions? I don't see any in uh, the chat for Zoom either. Okay, so I'll just end it here. Thank you.